we have already discussed question 1 to 6 in our earlier two videos for the question paper 42970 in chemistry of the examination series may june 2024 and in this video we are going to discuss question 7 to question 9 so let's go ahead so here is question 7 it says methyl red can be synthesized as shown in figure 7.1 and here we start with the compound p where you can see there is a benzene compound with carboxylic acid and nitro group and there are two step uh, reactions for it and then finally the r compound is combining with s to form the methyl red compound shown here right so let's go ahead with the next part it says give the systematic name of p now let's see what is p here okay the p is like we can know this is a benzoic acid now this is benzoic acid and we have nitro group on the benzene besides the carbon carrying the carboxylic acid now that carbon can be numbered as one so the nitro group can be numbered on the carbon two so we can name it as two nitro benzoic acid so we can write here two nitro benzoic acid that's the systematic name of p two nitro benzoic acid the second part is p can be synthesized as shown in figure 7.2 p is here and here uh, from the uh, compound shown here the p compound is synthesized for carboxylic acid on the benzene which was first uh, present as methyl group on the benzene now to change the methyl group to carboxylic acid that's actually an oxidation reaction and that occurs when an acidified or even alkaline will do acidified kmno4 that is potassium manganate solution along with heat and reflux it is done then the methyl group is oxidized to carboxylic acid on benzene ring okay the third part is a student attempts to synthesize P by an alternative route as shown in figure 7.3. Compound T is a major product in this reaction rather than P. So what is the difference in P and T is that the nitro group is on the third carbon and not the second carbon here. That is the major difference between P and T and that is done when the benzoic acid is reacted with concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. Now it says explain why T is a major product in this reaction. Now we need to understand that the group which is already present on benzene is carboxylic acid. Now we know that the carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid or even you can write the COOH group is electron withdrawing group. What is that? It is an electron withdrawing group and when an electron withdrawing group is present on benzene, it directs it directs the incoming electrophile it directs the incoming electrophile incoming electrophile that what is the electrophile here that's the nitro group here so incoming electrophile is directed on third or fifth position that is how uh, the reaction will happen so if carboxylic acid is already present on the benzene then the incoming group will come on third or fifth position so here uh, the third and fifth position is actually same because if the nitro group comes on this position from this side again it's the third carbon so it's the same so incoming electrophile is directed on third and fifth position if an electron withdrawing group is present on the benzene that's how the reaction occurs so the b part is S reacts in a similar way to phenol in step 3. Now remember it is S reacts in a similar way to phenol as in step 3. Draw the structures of Q, R and S in the boxes in figure 7.1. It says S reacts in a similar way to phenol. Now where is S? Okay, S is here. It reacts in a similar way and we are supposed to draw the structures of Q, R and S. So now let's first understand what is happening in figure 7.1 is that the benzoic acid is remaining as such without any change. So what is changing? 
what is changing is the nitro group is changing to an azo group this is a diazo group with is n double bond n so first we need to change the nitro group to azo compound and that is done when we change the um nitro group to the amine group okay so we are changing the nitro group to amine group with carboxylic acid remaining unchanged and that is how we draw the structure now this amine group will be diazotized to the diazo compound so let me draw the structure again the carboxylic acid if i am drawing here the diazo group is going to be here now that is i'm drawing n triple bond and that is a diazo group with a benzene ring and that is how it is formed and that is reacting along with the sulfur to form the final product now this is a coupling reaction where a diazo group will couple with another compound to form the s group now we need to understand this is s s is as such bonded to the diazo group on the benzene so this structure is drawn without any change in the s box so this is how i'm drawing this is s with a benzene ring you can see here is an n group methyl group and there are two more methyl group bonded to this so this is how we are going to draw the s compound you can see that the s compound bonds directly with the diazo group on the benzene so this is how we are going to fill up p q and r q r and s structures in the boxes suggest the reagents and conditions for step 1 and 2 in the figure 7.1 now what is step 1 we have changed the nitro group to amine group that is phenylamine and then we are forming a diazo group in the step 2 so what are the reagents needed for the step 1 and step 2 is for the first we are actually reducing the nitro group to amine group so for that we will need tin and concentrated hcl tin and concentrated hcl along with the heat and reflux is needed heat and reflux is needed along with the tin and concentrated hcl don't forget writing this because we are asked along with the reagents the conditions also so heat and reflux also carries the marks now in the second group we were changing the phenylamine group to the diazo compound now for diazotation reaction we need the nitrous acid that is hno2 and hcl also we can write concentrated hcl or only hcl and the condition needed here is that the temperature should be less than equal to 10 degrees celsius that is the main condition required for diazotation reaction and here our question 7 ends let's go ahead with the question 8 question 8 is state the relative basicities of the phenyl amine that is c6h5 nh2 benzyl amine that is c6h5 ch2 nh2 and the ammonia in the aqueous solutions and explain your answer now most basic has to be written first and that is benzyl amine that is c6h5 ch2 and h2 the in between will be ammonia that is nh3 and the last least basic is c6h5 nh2 that is phenylamine the reason being is that the nh2 is not directly bonded with benzene and it is bonded to the alkyl group in between first that's why it is most basic now we need to understand that the alkyl group i'm i'm just writing and explaining you that the alkyl group in what's the name is a benzyl amine in benzyl amine in benzyl amine is electron donating is electron donating and well, now we need to understand that any alkyl group other than benzene is electron donating and so it has you can put a comma and say it has positive inductive effect it has positive inductive effect inductive effect positive means elect is the lone pair or the electrons are more available for bonding okay so it has positive inductive effect making 
making lone pair of nitrogen making lone pair of nitrogen more available more available more available to bond with h plus to bond with h plus ion now if we are talking about bases it is we need to understand the substance which can accept hydrogen ion easily is more basic now we need to understand that when a nitrogen bonds with h plus is a lone pair of nitrogen that forms a coordinate bond with h plus and that's how it accepts the hydrogen ion so if this lone pair is easily available to bond with h plus it's going to be more basic and if the lone pair is less available it's going to be less basic now in ch2 benzyl amine group the ch2 is alkyl group is electron donating and that's why it will make the lone pair of nitrogen more available to bond with h plus and that's why it is more basic now ammonia is a uh, intermediate basic and if we talk about the least basic phenyl amine you can write that the lone pair in phenylamine the lone pair of nitrogen the lone pair of nitrogen in phenylamine in phenylamine overlaps overlaps with the pi bonding system of benzene overlaps with the pi bonding of benzene pi bonding of benzene making lone pair of nitrogen of nitrogen less available less available i'm not completing the sentence but it's very clear that less available to bond with h plus that is how we can write to bond with h plus so this is how we can describe the basicity simple as that the substance which is more basic the lone pair is more available to bond with h plus and the substance which is least basic the lone pair of nitrogen is least available to bond with h h plus that's how we have to think okay so the next part is an excess of br2 is added to separate samples of phenylamine and benzene so phenylamine reacts readily with bromine to form organic compound m state the expected observation for this reaction and draw the structures of m now phenylamine and phenol both reacts in the same way with the bromine and that also without the catalyst so this is a phenylamine structure i have drawn and when bromine reacts with it all the 2 4 and 6 position all the three positions 2 4 and 6 position is occupied by bromine and this is the compound form and so the observation is a white ppt now whether the phenylamine is present or or phenol is present but both of it will form the similar compound or 2 4 6 tribromophenylamine or 2 4 6 tribromophenol and both of this is going to show the uh, same observation that is white precipitates so this is how we have written the observation next part is c6h6 does not react with bromine that is benzene only benzene does not react with bromine suggest why bromine reacts with phenylamine but not with benzene directly without any catalyst so we can see the difference is that the nh2 group is present on benzene and here the benzene is not having any group now what's the difference when nh2 group is present nh2 that is a mine group is present it will it is electron donating group now if it's an electron donating group the electron density increases on the benzene making the electrophile more susceptible to the reaction and so that is the main reason so we can write that the lone pair lone pair of nitrogen of nitrogen of nh2 group of nitro of nitrogen of nh2 group on benzene nh2 group on benzene that is c6h6 overlaps overlaps with the with the pi bonding system with the pi 
bonding system of benzene bonding system of of benzene that is C6H6 now this increases this increases the electron density of benzene electron density of benzene and that's why the um, reactivity of phenylamine greens is compared to the only benzene in benzene the electron density is less compared to phenylamine so electrophile can react but it needs a catalyst here okay so if we go ahead with the c part explain why benzamide is a much weaker base than ammonia now we need to understand benzamide is a structure having a benzene then c double bond o uh, okay here and then nh2 group bonded to the co carbonyl group of uh, the benzene bonded bonded to benzene now again if we talk about base we need to understand that the lone pair of nitrogen should be more available now if it's a weak base that shows that it is less available and the reason being is that the carbon is bonded to nitrogen which is again bonded to another electronegative uh, element that is oxygen now because of that the lone pair of nitrogen gets delocalized with the co group also and it is less available so we need to uh, write that the lone pair the lone pair of nitrogen of nitrogen delocalized delocalized with CO group delocalized with CO group and it is less available less available to bond with to bond with H plus and the thing is that there are oxygen is also electron negative oxygen is also electron negative and because of that it is uh, going to make the lone pair of nitrogen very very less available and that's how it makes the uh, it a very weak base now if we see the d part it is said that benzamide is formed by reacting benzoyl chloride with ammonia and complete the mechanism in figure 8.1 for the reaction of the benzoyl chloride with ammonia to form the benzamide and you need to include all the relevant lone pairs of electrons curly arrows charges and dipoles draw the structure of the organic intermediate okay you have a benzoyl chloride here ammonia here and you have benzamide here so we are supposed to draw the organic intermediate with all the curly arrows partial charges and all that so if we start with the partial charges we have partial positive charge on carbon and partial negative charge on oxygen and we can draw a curly arrow from the double bond towards the oxygen showing that this electron pair will be going towards oxygen and we have a lone pair of nitrogen and that's going to get attracted to the partial positive carbon so if we draw all this then our intermediate will be something like this where the oxygen will have a lone pair and full negative charge the cl is remaining as such and the nh3 is bonded to the carbon carrying the partial positive charge now here as nh3 is a neutral but making the fourth bond it will make it more positive and so this is how it works but in the next step we have to show that this electron pair bonds with the carbon again this bond of ccl is going to break and it will move towards the chlorine and the hydrogen bond will also break and it's going to shift to the the electron pair will shift to the nitrogen so that the h can be separated easily so you can say that the nh bond is broken the double bond of co is retained here we can see that the double bond is retained here the nh3 has lost one nitrogen to form nh2 the cl which was here has also separated forming the hcl so this is how the intermediate product is formed along with the partial charges and the question e is phenyl alanine 
phenyl alanine is shown here is an amino acid with an isoelectric point of 5.5 now state what is meant by isoelectric point now isoelectric point is actually the ph so it is the ph it is the ph at which a molecule a molecule in our case it is amino acids but we can write it is the pH at which a molecule has no overall charge that is it is neither a positive or neither negative it has no overall charge though the charges may be present on it but equal number of charges are present so it will be cancelled and the overall charge is neutral that is no charge draw the structure next part is draw the structure of the alanine at ph 10 now ph 10 if you have a look here the isoelectric point is 5.5 so at ph 10 the aqueous solution which amino acid is present is actually a basic for this amino acid now on amino acid we know that there is an nh2 group and coh group both present that is a basic group and carboxylic acid acid group both are present so if the aqueous solution in which the amino acid present is basic then the amino acid is going to lose it H plus to the solution and that will make the um, amino acid negative. So this is how we are going to draw the structure with a negative part that is C6H5, CH2, CH. NH2 will remain as such nothing will happen to NH2 but then carboxylic group is going to lose its proton to form COO minus at the basic pH. So we need to add a negative charge on COO and the H is lost. Let's see what is the F part. F part is again the same amino acid and the alanine here it's shown alanine reacts to form a dipeptide containing both the amino acid residues draw the structure of this dipeptide the peptide functional group formed should be fully displayed now we can uh, actually draw this dipeptide in any one form that doesn't make any difference if we are going to bond the amine group of this and it's going to bond with a carboxylic acid of the alanine and if alanine's amine group is going to bond then it's going to bond with the carboxylic acid of this amino acid so we can draw anyways and i'm going to uh, remove the carboxylic going to bond the carboxylic group so let me draw the structure c6h5 ch2 i'm keeping the nh2 group same no change i'm only adding the co group that is carboxylic acid loses the oh group so oh group is born gone and the co group is only drawn and that bonds with the nh2 group here out of which the one h is gone to form the water so water goes off that is the oh group from the carboxylic acid and h from the amine group is lost as a water so here comes the nh group of the alanine and this nh2 group is bonded to this ch so i'm drawing the ch and the same ch is also bonded to carboxylic acid so i'm drawing the carboxylic acid here and that is CH group is bonded to the methyl group also so I am drawing the methyl group at the end. So we can draw this carboxylic acid as a branch here or, or in the bracket also and here also if I have written in bracket okay the NH2 group 2 has to be written inside the bracket. So what I can do is I am erasing it this out and drawing the structure again. So let me erase this out first. Let me draw the structure again because I am drawing the NH2 group in the branch here. So NH2 group in the branch here and then we have CH2 group also and then the benzene ring also that is C6H5. So this is how I have drawn it C6H5 CH2 CH with NH2 group in the branch. The uh, peptide dipeptide bond is peptide uh, functional group. You can say is uh, drawn fully displayed and the remaining part is also shown so here our question 8 also ends and then we are left with question 9 only now here is question 9 
and sub question a is explain why trichloroethanoic acid that is CCl3COOH is more acidic than ethanoic acid now the only reason the difference you can see is that here we have hydrogen and in the trichloroethanoic acid we have chlorine now the main part is that the the presence of the presence of electronegative electro we know that the chlorine is electronegative so the presence of electronegative chlorine atoms there are three chlorine atoms but even if there is one chlorine atom it makes it more acidic so here there are three chlorine atoms so the presence of electronegative chlorine atoms uh, makes the intermediate the intermediate intermediate carboxylate ion now i'll explain what is all this is the carboxylate ion more stable the intermediate carboxylate ion is more stable which makes oh bond weaker and as OH bond is weaker, H plus is released very easily, which doesn't bond that uh, to O back, and so it's more acidic. So, more easily the H plus is donated, it's going to be more acidic. Now, if we understand that if there is a chlorine present on the Cl around the COOH, then what is going to happen is that the intermediate carboxylate ion is uh, this, where there is. A negative charge being delocalized between the two oxygen atoms and if there is chlorine besides the carbon carrying the carboxylate ion that is O group then it is electron withdrawing and if this is electron withdrawing or electron donating the negative charge is not localized on the two oxygen atom it moves towards the chlorine and if it's not localized on both the oxygen atoms then the intermediate carboxylate ion that is the COO minus is more stable and so the H plus doesn't come back and bond with the oxygen atom and that's why it's more acidic so this is how we explain it the whole process in a shorter terms this way okay so let's go ahead with the B part where acyl chlorides are formed by reacting carboxylic acids with a thionyl chloride SOCl2 now the ethane, uh, ethane dioyl chloride that is COCl2, COCl twice can be prepared by reacting ethane dioic acid with excess of SOCl2 write an equation for this reaction. Now if we are using dicarboxylic acid that is COOH twice that is reacting with SOCl2 and that is going to form the acyl uh, uh, ethane dioyl chloride so that is COCl2 now that is the product given in the question now what are you left with you are also left with a sulfur oxygen hydrogen so this hydrogen is going to produce hydrochloric acid and it's also this the sulfur present is also going to form sulfur dioxide now if we balance it we have two here two here and two with the sulfur dioxide that's how it is balanced it can count all the chlorine and the sulfur oxygen hydrogen are balanced this way now the samples of this ethane dial chloride are reacted separately with excess of warm acidified KMnO4 and with the uh, you can say that this is 1 2 ethane diamine now the carbon containing products from the reaction with the diamine has the molecular formula C4H6N2O2 and the complete the boxes in figure 9.1 to suggest the structures of the carbon containing products in each reaction. Now you need to understand that what is this ethane dial chloride reacted with it is first reacted with excess of acidified warm KMnO4 warm is uh, like you are heating it gently potassium magnet so now potassium magnet is an oxidizing agent and that's going to oxidize the dial chloride to the carbon dioxide which is the carbon containing product so carbon containing product is only carbon dioxide so that's what we are writing here now if we have a look here 
this is CH2 NHO that is a 1 to ethane diamine and that is reacting with the acyl chloride. Now before we go ahead let me explain you that the acyl chlorides are acting just like carboxylic acids and it also reacts in a similar way but not as an acid. So if we talk about the carboxylic acid reacting with the amine group then it's going to form an polyamide or you can say amide group is formed. Now amide group is CO NH group. Now here we have diamine also and the chlorides are also like ethane dioyl chloride. Now that is going to bond from the both the sides. So in that case if we draw the structure we need to draw it as CH2 bonding with CH2. This here is a bond of NH. Again there is a bond of NH. Now also we need to understand the structure is having C4H6N2 and O2 is there. Now two nitrogen we have already drawn, two carbon also we have already added but the other two carbon and the oxygen are left and that is how it's going to form an amide group that is CONH group. You can see here I am drawing the amide group that is the acyl chlorides are bonding with the amine group of the ethane diamine and forming an amide group and this is how it's going to form the structure. So now if you count the molecular formula it is C4 excess H6N2O2. This is done and this is how our structure is also made. The third part is a polyester can be synthesized from the reaction of the acyl chlorides with the ethane uh, 1 to diol it's given here draw two repeat units of the polymer formed any functional groups should be displayed okay so now if uh, we start with the first repeat unit starting with the diols then in the diols we also need to understand that out of the alcohol group the hydrogen is uh, lost and out of the acyl chlorides the chlorine is left to form the byproduct HCl. So the CO bonds with the O of alcohol. So starting with the O of alcohol then we have CH2, CH2 and O and that bonds with the CO group of the acyl chloride. So then here we have C double bond O. And then again there is a diol so we again have a C double bond O. Then again we start with the alcohol of the same uh, diol so we have again O. Again CH2, CH2 and O. And then again we are starting with the uh, carbonyl group of the acyl chloride and this is how we draw the repeat unit. So now you can see that we have drawn two repeat units as mentioned in the question starting with the alcohol O and then uh, writing the acyl chloride parts of that CO twice again writing the alcohol part and us again the acyl chloride and then here comes the alcohol but then we have drawn only two, two repeat units so we don't need to draw the oxygen of the alcohol part again. So this is how we uh, draw the two repeat unit of the uh, polymer formed and here you can make out that the polymer formed is definitely a polyester because there is an ester group here. Okay, if we go ahead with the C part, it says compound H is C6H10O3 reacts with the alkaline iodine to form a yellow precipitate J but does not react with the sodium carbonate. Now you can look at the question and make out it's an NMR question where the NMR spectra is given for the compound H where there are 6 carbon atoms and hydrogen and 3 oxygen. Now we need to understand that out of these 3 oxygen there is no carboxylic acid present because it doesn't react with the carbonate. If Carboxylic acid is present, carbonate will definitely react to form the carbon dioxide and salt but that is not present but it reacts with the alkaline iodine so then we should have a methyl ketone part somewhere in the molecule of C6H10O3. Now let's see what are the remaining oxygen for and if we look have, uh, have a look at the spectra we can make out then there is a peak here at 1.15 which is a triplet then we also have a peak at 2.25 which is singlet 
we also have a peak at maybe 3.6 here which is again a singlet and then maybe 3.9 or 3.95 here which is a quartet you can see so now let's go ahead and look at the question what it is all about and if we go ahead yes we have a table for the uh, uh, chemical shifts of the proton okay here it says identify yellow precipitates uh, jane and uh, we know that the yellow precipitates are chi3 that is triiodomethane complete table 9.1 for the proton nmr spectrum of h of c6h10o3 okay now we also need to understand that the peak at 1.15 see here we have a list of peak 1.15 2.25 3.6 and 3.95 now we have already seen that the splitting pattern at 1.15 is triplet let's see the remaining part i think it was a singlet yes then the remaining two are uh, the next two are singlet and then quartet so let's write that first the two singlets then again and singlet and then there is a quartet quartet this is how we write okay now let's see that what are these peak responsible for which kind of proton these peaks are going okay 1.15 uh, you can say here is uh, somewhere in this range so that is for a ch3 why because ch3 is the compound which is uh, sorry it's a group which is producing a triplet now what does that mean that the ch3 is accompanied by ch2 besides it that's why this proton is a triplet because the adjacent carbon is carrying two protons so two plus a one splitting will be obtained for the proton here so it should be ch3 and besides it should be a ch2 group so let us write that that the protons responsible are three for it and the number of protons on the adjacent carbon should be two right so let's go ahead for the 2.25 which is a singlet now now this 2.25 is in the range here where there is a ch3 or ch2 accompanied by a co besides it the adjacent to it is co that is carbonyl group now if carbonyl group is present and it is a singlet now that shows that it should be CH3CO only because if it's CH2 then there should be one more carbon with some protons so the splitting pattern of this cannot be singlet now that means that if this is a singlet there is no carbon or the carbon is having no proton that's why the peak is singlet so we can imagine that there is an CH3CO group here so if we have 2.25 singlet we need to understand that the protons responsible are 3 and the protons on the adjacent carbon should be 0 and same for the next also because if it's a singlet the carbon besides it the adjacent to it should not have any hydrogen then only it produces a singlet so here we have now let's see what is 3.6 and what is that for 3.6 is again singlet and it's going to be in the range here and this is for ch3o or ch2o now this is only single bond o present besides an alkyl group which is an electronegative atom now i would say that the proton responsible here should be ch2 only why the reason being is that that if uh, there is a carbon chain without any branch then there are only two ch3 group present and that we have already de detected in both of it so that shows that now remaining proton or remaining carbon should not have any ch3 group that is there should not be any three proton altogether and we can say that that is an unbranched because then the ch3 group otherwise should be present twice and we would not get the triplet or quartet it uh, any of the proton might produce a multiplet if there are two ch3 group present right now that is not possible here there is no multiplet and there are only four kinds of proton present though the number of proton total present is h 
10. Now, if we know you have already counted 6 protons, 1 is CH3, CH2. So, these is 3 and 2, 5 protons already counted and again we have CH3 and CO group. So, 5 plus C, 8 protons we have already counted. That shows that we are left with only CH2. O now so now the protons responsible here are two and a singlet and this is for the co group present somewhere besides the ch2 group and then 3.95 quadrat 3.95 is a quadrat okay so there is a proton this proton is going to produce a quadrat because there is a CH3 group here. So, 3 plus 1 quadrat should be produced for the CH2 group. Now, that 3.95 is in what range? 3.95 again falls in this range. So, that shows that again there is a CH2O group present and that is going to produce the quadrat. So, that shows that along with this CH3, CH2, we have an O here. Now, if we have counted all this. There is two uh, such CH2 group which is bonded to O, right? We have three oxygen atoms and we have six carbon atoms. So, if we count for number of six carbon atoms, we can see that we have counted one here, two here, then three here, four here and we are still left with two more carbon. So, there is one more here and then there should be one more carbon present with either CH2O group or CO group. So, now let's understand what are the possibilities of a functional group with all these structures uh, which we can guess out. So, quadrat is again you can say two protons responsible for it and the number of protons on the adjacent carbon are three because of the quadrat present here. So now as we have already made out that there is a CH3, CH2 group now that is bonded to O. Now we have already also made a decision that there is one more CH2 group with O. So this is how we have made. So we have already done with uh, three carbon we are left with three more carbon and two more oxygen now that is possible only when we have two co group present and we have to follow the number of hydrogen also and we also know that there is an ch3 group which have co group besides it right so now that shows that uh, we have six carbon it's done we have three oxygen that's done and if you count the protons we have three plus two five five plus two uh, seven seven and three ten that is also done now this is how you're going to adjust the information which we have collected from the nmr spectra shown above but according to me and the information given here i think you can adjust this ch2 somewhere in between also but then there should be one more carbon directly bonded with o and that is how it should work so according to me this is the best structure we can draw with the given information and you can see now our question 9 has also ended with the 12 marks and here our paper discussion is fully completed and i hope that you have understood the whole paper because i have tried my level best to explain all the answers wherever possible in detail